So anybody else here like me and uh, finish Netflix over the last few years, man? Is it just me? Yeah, I've been watching way too much Netflix, yo, seriously. So much so, it's not suggesting other apps to me. Like, yeah, you may also like Hulu. Like, get the fuck out of here. I watched Tiger King twice. Like, the fuck are you doing? I really have, man. I've seen this one thing that stuck with me. And I don't know if you guys seen it. Uh, it was called the Ted Bundy tapes. You seen that shit? Yeah, I don't know if you guys found that shit as horrific as I did. But the whole time I was watching that shit, I was like, yo, I cannot believe Ted Bundy got a Netflix special before I did. Like, like you can't just kill with laughter. You got to really murder motherfuckers, you know? One thing that really bothered me about that shit was uh, the way the judge was treating Ted Bundy while sentencing him to death for over 30 brutal rapes and murders. I don't know if you remember, but the judge said things like, I like your style. I wish you would have took a different turn in life because you would have been a good lawyer. And I would have liked to have worked side by side with you. Yeah. And look, man, I had suspicions white dudes got treated really well by the criminal justice system, but that shit solidified it, you know? Exactly. It did. And I guess what I'm trying to say right now is that, you know, I just wish there was equality, you know? I wish Latinos could murder with some dignity too, man. But we can't even become serial killers too often, yeah? We can't. We just get, be, get caught too fast, you know? The first detective on the scene catches us and shit, you know? First detective will show up to that scene, open up that door. The killer used Fabuloso to clean up. <laughs> Put out an APB for a Puerto Rican man between the heights of 5'7 seven and 5'7 seven and a half. Possible names Raul and Jose. And now you only get to kill like two people, man. That shit is not right, yo. Something awkward happened to me the other day, man. You know, I tipped my Chinese food delivery guy so much. He bowed, which was really awkward because he was Mexican. I was like, yo, chill, bro. You don't got to do that. Just keep those $9, man. Relax, bro. I don't know. I started wondering why I'm a good tipper because sometimes I'm just broke, you know? And I think it's because I've been in the service industry. You know, I've been a barista before, and I've been a drug dealer. And if I were being honest, being a barista may be a terrible part of society, yo. It did, man. Because after a while, I started racially drink profiling people. Which is terrible, man. Next time I was with, like a white dude coming, I'm like, yeah, he's probably going to get a grande dry cappuccino. Um, dry like his personality. Yeah. Anytime I saw somebody from the hood come in, I wouldn't know what they would want for sure. But I knew whatever it was, they'd get extra caramel on that shit. Man. The hood loves caramel, yeah. It's true, man. I found myself at the bar. Like, yeah, I got a grande extra caramel water here. Grande extra caramel water. <laughs> I don't know. As a comic, man, get a little serious, you know. I think it's really weird when people get offended by jokes and shit, you know. I think it's, you could laugh at all these other subjects, but when one thing hits you in your heart, you want to get upset. That's really lacking of humility, you know. But I also understand. Because the other day I did this show, right? And I saw this comic get on stage and make fun of diabetics losing their feet for like 10 minutes. Yeah, seriously, man. As a diabetic comic, that shit really bothered me. Because I knew there was more jokes to make. Like, why well, stop at the feet, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, Yo, you missing man material, my man. Just wanted to slap him and shit. Yo, you got more jokes, dog. <laughs> like, seriously, for instance, you could make fun of me for sometimes having to take breaks during sex to eat a bowl of Frosted Flakes, you know? I gotta get my energy back up. You know? I come back like, yeah, now this pussy's gonna be great. <laughs> you can also make fun of me for being like crackhead level addicted to like pastries, you know? And I'm a pothead, man. When you get high and you're diabetic, you don't want quinoa or kale. You want little Debbie's. 
honey buns and shit, you know? Seriously, man. I think the only thing I got that was good out of it was when I was using syringes to take my insulin. I used to love doing it in public, yo. I did, man. Because you always get like one nosy ass motherfucker staring at you and shit. And as soon as I shoot up, I just start dozing off on him. I'm just gonna stay here the rest of the show. <laughs> I stay there for like seven more minutes and shit. You can't hit the floor though, that's the heroin addict's power. <laughs> you can body slam them, they'll pop up somehow. They're always on their feet and shit. <laughs> uh, it's a crazy time in the world, man. Crazy time, man. Can I still talk about the slap her around world? Yes. Can I? Please. Yeah, I really can't believe like Russia invaded Ukraine, man. Like. <laughs> That should cause so much fucking shit to go on, you know what I mean? I don't know, when I saw that, I'll be real with you. I got really, like, proud and, like, felt privileged to be an American, you know? Because you gotta know, as an American, we never have to worry about a country coming here and evading us. Never, man. Because if you want to start war with us, we turn it to Tony Montana really quickly. We turn it to Scarface. Oh, you want to go to war? Let's go to war. And we'll bomb the shit out of you. And even if like some country was to get past our military, that's like the strongest fighting force ever combined in the history of the globe, they're gonna get fucked up by the civilians here, man, because we're crazy. <laughs> we are. What would Russia do, you know? If they wanted to invade America. They'd have to storm South Beach in Miami. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know how many dudes gonna meet them on the front lines coming straight from the club? <laughs> You know how demoralizing it is to lose to somebody in a button-up? <laughs> Wearing body glitter and shit? Like, they're gonna turn back around, man. Our war drums will be blazing down there, too. They're gonna be like, nah, we're out, man. Fuck you, Putin. And I wonder, like, what would happen if, like, you know, like, Russia got deeper into America and they had to deal with all those, like, States have been like preparing for the second civil war, you know what I mean? Like all them crazy motherfuckers. If they didn't join Russia, they'd probably just really take it out of them. But I don't trust those motherfuckers because they probably joined them, you know what I mean? And as a New Yorker, I think like, what would happen if they actually got up to New York? You know how fucked up they'd be in traffic out there, man? <laughs> They'll be stuck on different highways, like having to take the train to evade further in and shit. They end up getting off on the wrong stop and fighting the South Boogie Down Bronx Freedom Fighters. And I'm gonna be real with you, you guys on the West Coast, but you don't wanna get caught up out there, man. Cause there won't even be dudes fighting, it's just gonna be all the girls. They'll be keying up your tank. Fuck out of here, Russia. You ain't shit. Just step on your tank, we wanna talk. Just step on your tank, we wanna talk. <laughs> If you ever in the South Bronx, guys, and somebody tells you to step out of your vehicle, they want to talk, don't, do it. don't step out that fucking vehicle. They're going to fuck you up. I'm telling you, man. That's why I'm proud to be an American, man, you know, because I, I know that you never have to worry about anybody coming here and fucking with you, man. The only person that can really kill you is your fellow American, you know what I mean? It's their God given right, yo. <laughs> oh, shit. It is a crazy time, man. I find it wild how, like, over the last few years, we've been dealing with a pandemic. Wars popping off in Europe and shit. But science and technology moves on, you know? There's been companies working on civilian space flight. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but soon, for only $250,000, you'll be able to go to space, man. Yeah, which just means I'm gonna have to wait till Spirit Airlines offers that flight. <laughs> till Delta got that shit, you know what I mean? And by that time, it's gonna be super trash, right? We're not gonna even like it no more. We won't, man. Cause you'd end up like having like an eight day layover on the moon on your way to Mars. <laughs> by the time you get to Mars, they're gonna send your bags to Venus and shit. You're gonna have to deal with their airlines. They're gonna tell you, sir, we'll get your bag back to you in about two light years. <laughs> My vacation's over in one, goddammit. <laughs> That's fucking 
fucking stupid. <laughs> oh, that's shit. I'll tell you this, a couple more things before I get out of here. Uh, I grew up in the hood, Harlem man, as a metalhead. Yeah, metalheads, where you at, yo? Throw those horns up. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but that shit was rough. I used to get made fun of a lot, man. I remember when I brought home my first guitar, everybody made jokes on me, man. They were all like, oh, look what we got here. A Latino Nirvana. <laughs> oh, look, it's Kurt Cubano himself. <laughs> and that was just my mom's, man. <laughs> it's tough, man. My homies were mean, too, because they were ignorant about it. Like, oh, you listen to that white boy, kill your mother, kill your father, devil shit? <laughs> that rap. I had to tell them, like, yo, that's only like two songs, but man. Like, everything else is pretty tight. People that didn't like me, they were really mean because I was into that music, yo. They used to call me gay a lot for being into it, man. So I'd get into a lot of fights with them and shit over this, man. And then I'd have to go home and, like, clean up my wounds and put on a fresh coating of black nail polish. <laughs> and I'd just be there, like, <sighs> <sighs> Calling me gay, fuck is your problem? <sighs> Wait till I catch you on the block again, my man. <sighs> yeah, shit. You guys been awesome, man. I'll tell you one more thing before I get out of here. I've been thinking about quitting weed, yo. Yeah, I have, man. Even though I'm high right now. <laughs> tell there's potheads in here, so you guys know, marijuana just helps with mental health, yeah. It does. Because I've had, like, I've had rough days before where I've had a bad show or a rough time at work, my day job and shit. And I've come home and just had these dark thoughts, yeah. Nothing that I would act upon, but they're just in my head sometimes. Because I'm like, man, I could just go to the roof and end all this shit. Why stress, you know? But as soon as I take that first hit of that weed, all that shit changes, man. It does, because I'm like... <sighs> you know, that's five flights of steps I'd have to walk up to jump on this shit. And I'm not trying to die tired. I just chill here and finish Tiger King again, man. Yo, thanks for living my shit, guys. That was fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm feeling man.